Hello, welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Wicked Box Chapter 7. The next time Box saw Elphaba and Galinda, all thoughts of romance fled. It was the small triangular park outside of the gate of Craig Hall. He just be happening by once again, and this time Arabic in tow. The gates had opened and Alma Vimp had come flouncing out, face to white and nose dripping, and a flurry of girls poured out after her. Among them were Elphaba and Galinda and Shen Shen and Fanny and Mila. Free of their walls, the girls huddled in chattering circles or stood beneath the trees and shocked or hugged each other and wailed and wiped each other's eyes. Bach and Averick stood up to their friends. Elphaba had shoulders high like a cat's bony yoke and hers was only dry face. She stayed arm's length away from Galinda and others. Bach longed to take Belinda in his arms, but she didn't look at him more than once before diving face into Mila's tech fur collar. What is it? What's happened? said Arabic. Miss Shen Shen, Miss Fanny. It's too horrible. They cried and Galinda the nodded and her nose ran wrestling along the thing. Police are there and a doctor, but it seems to be what said Bach and turned to Elphie. Well, Elfie, what is it? They found out, she said. Her eyes were glazed like old Shizinian Shiz porcelain. Somehow the bastards found out. The gate creek opened, and petals of early autumn, vinyl, vine flowers, blue and purple, came dancing over the college wall. They hung and stepped like butterflies and fell slowly as three K policemen in a dark and a doctor in dark came emerging carrying a stretcher. A red blanket had covered the patient, but the wind that tossed the petals caught a corner of the blanket and pulled in a triangular fold. The girls all shrieked and Amma Vamp ran toward to tuck the blanket down, but in the sunlight all had been locked down and seen the twisted shoulders and backbone head of Dr. Delman. His throat was knotted with Congealed rope of black blood where it had been slit as thoroughly as he had been wandering into an abattoir. Bach sat down, disgusted in the lawn, hoping he had not seen death, just a horrible, treatable wound. But the police and doctor weren't hurrying. There was no reason to hurry now. Bach fell against the wall, and Averick, who had never seen the goat before, held Bach's hands tightly with one hand and covered his own face with the other. Right before Galinda and Elphaba sank down beside him, and there was some weeping, some long weeping before words could be spoken. At last, Galinda told the story. We went to bed last night, and Alma Clutch got up to pull the drape closed, and as she does, she looks down and almost says to herself, Well, there's the lights on. Dr. Goat is at it again. And then she peers a little closer down the yard and says, Well, isn't that funny? And I don't pay attention. I'm just sitting there staring, but Elphaba says, What's well, funny, Alma Clutch? And Alma Clutch just pulls the drape back very tightly and says in a funny voice, Oh, nothing, my ducks. I'll just step down to check and make sure everything's all right, as long as you girls are abed. She said good night and she leaves, and I don't know if she goes down there or what. But we find, but, but we both fall asleep, and in the morning she isn't there with the tea. She always gets tea. She always does. Galinda gave herself tears, sinking and then raising herself to her knees, then trying to tear her black silk gown with white epaulets and the white bobbing elbow, dried eye as a desert stone, continued. We waited until after breakfast, but then we went to Madame Morrible's, said Alpha, and we told her that she didn't know where Alma Clutch was. And Aunt Madame Morrible said that Alma Clutch had had a relapse during the night and was recovering in the infirmary. She didn't let us see her at first, but when Dr. Delman didn't show up for our first lecture of the semester, we wandered over there and just pushed our way in. Alma Clutch was in a hospital bed. Her face looked funny, like a pancake, a last pancake of the batch. Wig all goes wrong. We said, Alma Clutch, Alma Clutch, what has happened to you? She didn't say anything. Even though her eyes were open, she didn't hear us. We thought maybe she was asleep or in shock. But her breathing was regular and her color was good, even though her face seemed awry. Then we were leaving. She turned 
looked at her bedside table. Next to a medicine bottle and a cup of lemon water, there was a long rusty nail in the silver tray. She reached a shaky ha hand out the nail and picked up and held it in her palm tenderly, and she talked to it. She said something like, Oh, well then, I know you didn't mean to stab my foot last year. You were only trying to get my attention. That's what m misbehavior is all about. Just a little extra loving being asked for. Well, don't you worry, Nail, because I'm going to love you just as much as you need. After I have a little nap, you can tell me how you came to be holding the platform of the whale raid station at Fronica, for it seems quite a leap from your early years as a common hook for a close for the season sign of the dingy hotel you were talking about. But Bot could not listen to Blather. He could not take the story of a live nail while a dead goat was being prayed over by hysterical faculty members. Bach could not listen to the sounds of the prayers for the repose of the animal spirit. He could not watch the departure of the course when they trundled away, for it all been clear with a glimpse of the ghost still face that whatever had the doctor his the whatever had given the doctor his enlivening character had already disappeared. And that's the end of that chapter. See you later.